Let's say you got a patch cord that's not working out for you. This is just a standard OM3 patch cord multi-mode. This one's an LC and over here are SC and I've taken this apart so I could put a laser on it. It just blinks laser across it. It's a visual fault locator is what they call it. And you see it's coming through just fine. Take this off. This is how you'll have it installed and you can see the laser coming through. But let's say something happens in the wire manager and it cracks and it breaks. If you're in the server room, you can turn the lights off and see exactly where it's broken. See how it's it's leaking out right there. That's why they call this a visual fault locator. Visually, you can see where the fault is in your line and you can locate it. It's not your fault. So right now, this is not really any good. So we're gonna repair it. We're gonna put a new termination on this side. So first things first, we gotta get the damaged part off. You can use any kind of scissors or shears. So we'll just cut it just before the crack. There it is again, super bright. This is now trash. However, if you wanna make a really short patch cord, you could start right here and then get yourself about a one foot jumper that might be good switch to switch or something like that just the damage is only right here so you can cut this off and make yourself a short patch cord so we just need to start stripping these back we're going to use the big hole first and get the outer jacket off just bite down all the way as hard as you can doesn't matter you're not going to damage it and just pull straight away bite down hold it pull straight away We'll do the same on the other side. You can start way up high if you want. Make sure they're about even because you'll want it to look nice whenever you go to patch it back in. There we go. So the Aramid yarn. This is the what Bulletproof Vest are made out of. It's super tough. It's really strong. That's where the cable gets its strength from. When you pull these cables, they are super strong. It's not this rubber hose. It's the yarn on the inside where all the strength is coming from. So now we need some terminations. I'm using these. This is an LC OM3. OM3 is the type of cable I have here. LC is the type of termination I'm replacing. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll see that you can use the part number. And if you put a Z on the end of it, those are the packs that have just a few parts. And if you don't put the Z on it, this is what you get. So 950599X. And if there was an extra Z, you wouldn't have all these pieces. These are individual, there's 25 of them here, 25 individual packs. We're just gonna get the first two out of here. They tear off, close this up. Now we've got 23 in here. Just a little note for later. Now I know. All right, so we're gonna tear these open and get all of our pieces out of here. And I'll show you what each one does. These little copper rings, that's the real important part here. So make sure they don't roll away. Make sure you don't lose them. So they come with all these pieces. You've got your termination, the snag resistant claw, a copper ring, and then three different boots. This is if you have just a thin fan out, this one's about a medium size, and this one's a larger size. That's way too thin, so we don't need that. And we're gonna test these out to see which one fits our cable best. Now these look real similar, but they're a little bit different. See, they're a little bit different size. So we're just gonna test to see which one fits our cable best. We cut the yarn off, that way we can get a good measurement. We're gonna try the medium. And it looks like it's gonna go, but just not quite. It is just a hair too tight. We might be able to get it on there after a while of working it, but it is just, it's just too tight. So we're gonna use the larger one and we're gonna run it all the way up. And then this one as well. Get yourself a little bit of slack too. Okay, now we're gonna put the copper collars on. All right, so you got the boot, the collar, and the snag resistant claw here. And now we're gonna strip this out and terminate it. So now we're gonna get a little bit more yarn and we're just gonna cut about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. Make sure they line up about the same. That's pretty good. All right, now is the important part. We gotta get lots of really correct measurements to make sure everything fits properly. On these bags is a ruler and then lots of measurements. There's one diagram here for a fan out tube, one diagram here for jacketed cable, then another diagram for tight buffer. We're doing jacketed cable. So we need to put a mark on the fiber at two millimeters. We need the yarn to be about 13 millimeters and the jacket is gonna be about 11 millimeters. And then this is just the glass all by itself all the way to 40 millimeters. So we need two, we need 11, and then we need 13. So we can use this thing as a ruler, but also on the kit, there's a ruler there. Right, so we're gonna use this as a reference and we're gonna mark these things off. Two millimeters. The Uzi nine millimeter. On just the 
fiber tubing. So we start back here. You gotta hold the yarn back. We're gonna start back here at zero. And do one, two. All right, so I'll just put a dot at two millimeters. Now the next one is gonna be 11 millimeters. And then the 13 millimeter is for this yarn. And I'm already pretty close. That one doesn't have to be exact, but it needs to be at least 13. You don't want it to get real long, because then it gets real shaggy. Wasn't me. Heard the words that I told her. Wasn't me. Shaggy, but you definitely don't want it too short. And we're gonna do the same on the other one. Two millimeters and then 11 millimeters. And the last one it says is 40. Now that one, it's not specific, but we'll just do it. You can do 40 or longer. Let's just go ahead and put it on there. Set this out of the way now. So at the 40 mark, that's how long it needs to be to fit in the cleaver properly. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it just a little bit longer. And then now we're gonna start stripping it all the way to our 11 millimeter. So we're gonna use the middle hole and we're gonna do a little piece at a time. Little piece, little piece, all the way to 11. And then the smallest hole, one shot all the way. There we go, there's all the coating, that's clean. We have to set up our cleaver, we're gonna pop this. You'll need this chip and you'll want it to be at the 2.9. You want the magnets lined up up here and this is gonna be flush right here. Close this. We also want to load our cam tool. Make sure this is the right size. I'm still set up on ST, so I'm gonna switch it out. So this one's the LC and if you notice, there's a notch right up there. You want that notch to go into that slot. There's a groove right here. And you tighten it up all the way. Sometimes these will be clear plastic. Sometimes it's the black rubber. The black rubber is a little bit older style. Press your red right off the bat. Squeeze and hold the black. That raises this up and down. Take the back end of this and you want to put it down into the hole of your cam tool until it's seated. This is coming out the bottom. This is seated snugly and then slowly let go of your load lever and it grabs it. Then pull this down until it clicks. Make sure your tool is on. Close the door. We're good. Now we're just going to set this to the side. Make sure no dirt gets in here or else this termination is bad and you need to get another one. So now this guy is ready to go. We're going to treat it just like the regular fiber. You can watch my other videos and I'll show you here. Take the rag, take the cleaner, just gonna pump it once or twice to get the rag damp and then fold it, and wrap it around on the jacket. You don't want to grab a hold of the fiber. You want to grab a hold of the jacket, squeeze it and then rub down the fiber. Once or twice is fine. Now we're gonna take the cleaver, squeeze both buttons Run this in there all the way through until it stops. Let go of the black, then let go of the red. Now watch this. When we squeeze the blue, it's going to cleave the glass and that should stop. That's on, now we squeeze it. There we go, it's done. The fiber is broken in here now. Now grab your jacket. Squeeze the black and pull it out. Now this, you don't see the laser anymore, but that's because it's cut so clean. When I just cut it with my shears, the end of the glass pretty much explodes and it's like shining light at a disco ball. It goes in every direction. But since I put it in the cleaver, it is cut smooth and there is a tiny piece of glass smaller than the size of your hair that the laser is coming out of in one direction. See, now you can see it. And if you look directly at it, it is super tough to see until you're pointing right, right directly at it. You go off to the side, now you can't see it. If you look directly at it, now you can. That's also a way to know that you've got a good cut, a good cleave. Now we're gonna take this and push it in all the way. Now you can't hardly see it, but if you can see the two millimeter mark, that's good. Sometimes 
it won't go in that far and it lets you know hey you need to push it a little bit further but you got to hit that two millimeter mark okay so now we know this is good we turn this crank right here and it's locked into place hold this down and now squeeze this and now you come straight out with this and we're almost done set this to the side now in your kit there's a secret compartment down here labeled 11 open this up and you've got a crimper in here this crimper only has one hole and it's perfectly sized for these copper rings so we're going to take the copper ring and slide it all the way up and it's going to cover this round barrel right here see it's a little bit shagging if we had trimmed it earlier to the exact amount, this would be perfect, but it's good to have a little bit extra than not enough. We'll just cut some of this off. If this is too short, it won't reach this barrel and this copper ring won't be doing anything. So make sure you don't get it too short. There we go. Squeeze this and that releases it. It's a ratchet mechanism. See, it stays wherever you squeeze it last until you hit the last ratchet. Now it pops itself open. All right, line it right up and you want it all the way up against the square. Make sure you don't actually get the square, but just get right up to it. Okay, now when you pull this, it's not pulling the fiber, it's pulling the yarn. So it has all the strength. We can take this purple piece off. We can put our dust cap back on, put the snag resistant claw on here. And then we'll put the boot on here. I forgot a step on my other one, so this one is missing its claw, but it still works. And so now we have our patch cord works again. You're back in business. You don't have to run a new cord all the way across the server room. You don't have to go to the store and come back an hour later. You're ready to go. I hope this helped. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what else you'd like to see demonstrated.